we present Edward Patherbridge, Donald Sinden, Gary Waldhorn, Martin Hyder, and Daniel Peacock as the Lady Killers. Adapted for radio by Bruce Bedford from the Ealing Comedy Screenplay by William Rose. With Margot Boyd as mum, Johnny Morris as the parrot, and Stratford Johns as Sergeant MacDonald. The Lady Killers. Sergeant! Yes, Constable? What do you spy? It's Mrs. Wilberforce. What? And closing fast. Oh, why is it always me? <laughs> um, good morning, Sergeant. Mrs. Wilberforce. Sergeant, it's about my friend Amelia and her, her, her spaceship. Spaceship? Thank you, Constable. The one she saw in her garden last Wednesday afternoon. She's, uh, seen it again? Sergeant, she never saw it in the first place. Oh, I'm very relieved to hear that. Amelia had her wireless on and they were doing a little play. Visitors from another world or something. And the silly girl just dropped off to sleep and dreamt the whole thing. I do hope all sorts of official wheels haven't been set in motion, Sergeant. Well, don't you worry about wheels, Mum. If there are any beings on other worlds, I can't think why they would want to come to our world. <laughs> now you come to mention it. Oh, we seem so terribly overcrowded already, don't we? Uh, goodbye, Sergeant. Uh, the Constable? Uh, Mrs Wilberforce? Your umbrella? Always leaving it. The truth is, I, I don't like it very much, really. Perhaps that's the reason. <laughs> Goodbye. Oh, dear. Whichever one is it? Oh, yes. So very long, have I? Oh, darling, no water. Mrs. Wilberforce? Yes? 
I understand you have rooms to let. I saw your charming card in the shop window. Oh, oh the rooms, yes. Yes. Uh, won't you come in, please? Ah, thank you. My name is Marcus. How do you do, Mr. Marcus? Uh, Professor Marcus. Ah, how do you do, Professor? Uh, rooms, yes. Well, now I have two up those stairs and... Oh, I'm, I'm sorry. I seem to have a kettle. <laughs> yes, yes. Uh, uh, please, come up. You live here all alone? Uh, yes. Hmm. This is the sitting room, and through there, the bedroom. Mm -hmm. Oh, dear. These rooms do need an airing, don't they? Uh, I'm afraid the uh, view is... Uh, well... Uh, mm. Most exhilarating. The rooms will suit me admirably, Mrs. Wilberforce. Mm. Oh. And I shall move in tomorrow, if that is convenient to you. Tomorrow? Mm. Oh, of course. <laughs> oh. Hmm. Hello? Hello? Who's that? Oh, it's only General Gordon. He belonged to my late husband. I had four. A husband? Oh, parrots. Uh, parrots? <laughs> oh, Mrs. Wilberforce. Some friends and I have formed a small um, musical group. A string quartet, in fact. Then you're a musician, a professor of music. Oh, no, no, no. Merely an amateur, you understand. But we have been looking for somewhere to practice. Would it oh, be agreeable if... if you we... were to practice here? Mm. Oh, Professor Marcus, I should be delighted. I have always loved music. Oh. Uh, now, mm. uh, just one moment. Mm. I, I have a spare key somewhere here in the sitting room. Oh. Excellent. I shall be able to let my friends in of an evening. They can come and go without dis help, help, help. disturbing you. Oh, here it is. Oh, it wouldn't disturb me in the least. I have very few friends. It could be very pleasant to have someone in the house again. Sweet bird. My little companion, General Gordon. You are most kind. Uh, and if I may say so... Uh, you have a very charming house. Oh. Such um, pretty windows. I always think the windows are the eyes of a house. And didn't someone say the eyes are the windows of the soul? I don't really know. But it's such a charming thought. I do hope someone expressed it. Mrs Wilberforce. Au revoir. Good morning, Professor Marcus. Till tomorrow. <laughs> I'll answer it. It must be my friend. Oh, yes, yes. <laughs> ah, good evening, Major Courtney. What? Oh, yes, good evening, Professor. I hope I'm not too early. Not at all, not at all. Mrs. Wilberforce, may I present Major Courtney? How do you do, Mrs. Wilberforce? I'm honoured. How do you do? Um, come in, gentlemen. Come in. May I introduce Mr. Lawson? Mr. Lawson? Oh. And uh, Mr. Robinson. How do you do? Yeah, all right, sir. So you're the cellist, Mr. Lawson? Hey, The what? Indeed, he's the cellist. <laughs> Mrs. Wilberforce knows her music, you see, Mr. Lawson, and can tell by your instrument case. Oh, uh, yeah, I'm the... Uh... So, so, there's only Mr. Harvey to come. So I think uh, we might go upstairs, gentlemen. Indeed, yes. 
Uh, uh, do, do excuse me, Mrs. Wimbleforce. If I can get by with my... Uh, I'm this. so sorry, Major. Sorry. No, no, I can manage. Let's thank you, Senor. Not dark this time, Harry Professor. Oh, then. Take out your instruments and place them ready to hand. Aye. Where you can reach it quickly, one round. Oh, Lord. Ah, good evening, Mr. Harvey. It is Mr. Harvey, isn't it? What did you say? Yes, yes, it is Mr. Harvey. Come in. Come in. Professor Marcus has told me so much about you. What have you been... Upstairs, Mr. Harvey. Great music calls. <clears throat> Who is she? What did she mean you've told her so much about me? Are we supposed to make noises with these things? Not noises, one round. Music. Eh? Blimey. I said, what did she mean? Not what you think, Louis. Uh, gentlemen, we shall now make music. Let's see. Ah. Boccherini's minuet, I think. Uh, look, poor far down, I want into this fiddle from the other. Fortunately, others do. Oh, clever. Damn clever. To the bedroom, gentlemen. <laughs> We have a plan <laughs> to discuss. <laughs> it makes no sense we should bring out the money ourselves or get a professional. Make a spectacular getaway, you mean, at 70 miles an hour in the heart of London in broad daylight with all the traffic? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Or take it into the railway station. And send and it out by train. You've quite a flair, Louis, for the obvious. Just like any intelligent policeman, and there are going to be plenty of those there, believe me. They'll have the whole area sealed so tight, you couldn't... I shall explain. In detail, in small words, and you will appreciate that Mrs. Wilberforce is not a mere appendage to my plan. She is the very core of it. That lopsided old... Grandma! Yeah, just like my grandma. I don't like old ladies. I don't like having them around. I can't stand them. Your place is please. One round! Eh? Take your position. Oh, yeah. Do come in. I thought perhaps before you all became too absorbed, you and your guests might like a cup of tea. Uh, oh, you shouldn't have. Very kind. Well, most kind. You know, Professor, you didn't tell me the truth about yourself. What? All these other gentlemen. Old ladies. I warned you. Why, you're not in the least bit like amateurs. You really must be professionals. You're every bit as good. Oh. <laughs> Not quite. Uh, though we are rather proud of Mr. Harvey's timbre. <laughs> and that pizzicato passage, Mr. Lawson, is quite delightful. May I ask where you studied? I uh, didn't really study no place, lady. Just picked it up. I was so surprised when I heard what you were playing. It brought back something I'd completely forgotten about. My 21st birthday party. My dear father engaged a string quartet to come in and play in the evening. And while they were playing Boccherini, someone came in and said the old queen had passed away. You really hate her. Then everyone <clears throat> went home. And that was the end of my party. All that time ago, in Pangborn, 
Boccherini. <clears throat> oh, look, I've forgotten the sugar. And I, I won't be a moment. <clears throat> what old queen? That's it. I don't care how we do this job, but we leave her out of we it. We had me better discuss it later. No, no discussion. I want it settled here and now. All right, Louis. I'll put it to the vote. But understand this, no one is indispensable. And certainly not you. Only the plan is essential. The plan. This plan. My plan. Major, yeah. a word. If we don't use Mrs. W, if we call in someone else, we'll each have to take a smaller cut, eh? Yeah, I take your point, yes, completely. We see eye to eye. I want her out of it. Two for her, one against. Harry? Well, I, I just don't think we can depend on a screwy old dame like that. It's up to you one round, for your fine mind to decide. Uh, I don't, uh... You're going to leave a decision like this to a thick-eared moron? I've got a vote too, ain't I? I'm with you, Prof. Mum just got elected. Bravo! A majority decision to do the intelligent thing. And you accept it, Louis? Or pack your fiddle and play elsewhere? <sighs> All right. But you'd better worry about your plan, because her part in it sounds to me like... like something someone dreamt up in the booby hatch. <laughs> what? Daddy Prof. Did you say? Now, shall I be mother? The train now arriving at platform one is the one five from Cape. One minute and thirty five seconds late. One minute thirty five late. Four policemen, two by bullion van doors, two by train. Van doors opened immediately. Train door opened as first cases approach. Picture. He's a taking his time, isn't he? No, reconnaissance is the essential part of any campaign. And the doc, the professor, is never surpassed at that. He says something happens at quarter past three. It does, see? Catch me hooking up with an amateur, no chance. Yeah, see? Oh, no. Oh, excuse me, Major Courtney. Would you care for some tea? <laughs> Perhaps you'd like some tea, Major Courtney. Uh, no, no, thank you, Mrs. Wilberforce. <laughs> uh, please don't bother. You English and your damn tea. Oh, I like tea. I could make some cocoa if you prefer. Uh, no, no, thank you. You're very kind, but uh, thank you. <clears throat> yes, Mrs. Wilberforce? So sorry to bother you, Major, but before you start again, would one of you hold General Gordon for me? I beg your... Oh, the parrot. I have to give him his medicine, you see. It's very difficult to manage by myself. Mr. Uh, Robinson, uh, would you mind giving uh, Mrs. Wilberforce a hand? It's a pleasure, Mrs. Wilberforce. Lead me to him. If you three gentlemen will excuse me a tick... Tea, cocoa, mend the plumbing. Give the parrot his medicine. She will be the death of us. Ow! Ow! Oh, I, I'm so sorry. I, I do apologise. No, no, no. It's all, it's all right, Mrs. Wilberforce. No, it's, it's nothing. I assure you, he's never bitten anyone before. A fact. Very nice. I, I wonder how we're to get him done. What? Well, from the top of the cabinet. Oh, you wicked boy! It's truth. I was only trying to help. No, no, no Mr. Robinson. Oh. I... oh, look at that finger. Oh, I'll get a bandage. Oh, no. no, 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 don't bother, Mrs. Wilberforce. It's all right. Yes, what did it? 
Swab the dicks yourself, you filthy looking toad. Is there a problem, Mrs. Wilberforce? We heard a cry. I'm so sorry, Major Courtney, but I'm afraid General Gordon has bitten Mr. Robinson's finger. Oh, dear. Now he's on top of the cabinet and refuses to come down. Mr. Robinson is on top of your cabinet? Oh, no, Mr. Harvey. General Gordon. Mr. Lawson, you're, you're by far the tallest. Do you think you could try to get him down for us? For us? For us! Hi. Sure. I'll get him down, Mum. I feel I'm being such a bother. Ah. Oh, yes, I've always been very fond of parrots. Yeah? All four were at sea for many years with my husband, you see. Not the only one at sea. And now there's just General Gordon left. Oh. Up there, next to the ship's bell. You got something I can climb up on, Mum? Oh, oh no, ladders were something I could never. Oh, oh this chair. Th- though it's rather frail for a man of your. Don't you worry, I'll get him down. Come here, Birdie. Repel, Mona! Birdie? It might be better not to hold on to the cabinet. And, uh, that chair isn't as sound as it is. <laughs> He mustn't get out. Who, my dear? Oh, please, the, the kitchen window is open. What are you doing to that chair, old chair? <laughs> Blue water ahead. Wah! Oh, Major. I'm terribly sorry about opening with... Ah, oh, there he is, at the window. Oh, dear. It'll be all right. If you just tiptoe and stretch up your hand, but very quietly, he's terribly sensitive. Here, here, Polly, Polly, <laughs> General Gordon, come on then. Come on. Sorry about the chair. And one escaped parrot. Yes, there he is, perched on top of the roof. Blimey. Do you have such a thing as a ladder, Mrs. Wilberforce? I'm afraid not. Then I don't really see... Hold on, look! Outside the professor's window. There's the flat roof. You're right, dear boy. And from there, you could reach the top section of the roof. Hang on, what's this you? Well, I mean, you, you're... Look, I'm wounded in the finger, see? Get him yourself. You really mustn't trouble any more. It was the last time I just telephoned the police and they came round with the fire brigade and long ladders and everything. The police? No, 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 really, no, no, no need for that, Mrs. Wilberforce. We'll manage. Blast that bird. It's gone to the roof. I have to work with you and the three of you can't even catch a parrot. We can reach the roof through this window. Then, uh... Along that flat bit. Oh, no. Louis doesn't chase any parrot. I don't care if he's a field marshal. Actually, he's a general. What? Come on, I'm I'm not too keen on heights, you know. Oh, okay. Okay. But you help me. Good morning, Louis. Nice view from the roof. Uh, good morning to you, General. You've been taking a spin, have you? Morning, morning, morning. Don't nibble my ear. There's a good chap. <laughs> a delivery for you, madam. Why, there, 
there he is. Sound as a bell, Mrs. Wilberforce. Look at that, straight onto her shoulder. That's nice, that. Poor darling, he does so dislike taking his medicine. Oh, he's been so upset, I think I'll leave it till tomorrow. Is that all right with you, Mr. Robinson? No, I... Yeah, tomorrow. Professor, your gentleman's musical practice has been so interrupted. Uh, and I believe several are still on my roof. Would you like me to make... No, thank you, Mrs. Wilberforce. No tea, thank you. All the same. Uh, there are several tricky passages we must really get to grips with before we are at um, performance pitch. How uh, tricky, Professor... Oh, another fortnight should do it nicely. Your assistance would be invaluable, but you are sure it is not inconvenient? Not at all, Professor. My time is my own. You're so kind. Naturally, I shall reimburse the taxi fares. It will help me more than you could know in a particularly busy day. Oh, the time. Au revoir, Mrs. Wilberforce. Au revoir. <laughs> It's all right, Prof. Perfect. One round, if you'd be so good as to stick this notice firmly to the phone box door. Out of order. Bravo. Uh, Professor, this phone box, it's important to your plan later on, right? That is correct. Well, if it's out of order... Uh... <coughs> Don't worry about that one round. The professor will have something up his sleeve. Right. All that ox has between his ears is muscle. And it's muscle you can depend on. Thank you, Harry. I choose all my men with care. Me you can count on. Look, he stuck it on upside down. And now has corrected it. Sorry. I think a moment's communion. Communion? Look, I left all that back. Gentlemen, I see that we are about to bake a cake. Baking? What's he on about? Quiet, it's his way. A moment at the start of every job, old chap, when he shares his overall vision. The man's a genius. But now he's a baker. You know your tasks to the second, but now know my vision. We are about to bake a cake. Louis drives the decoy getaway car, which, at the hit, is the bottom layer of the cake. Louis drives a cake. Shh! One round and I are the top of the cake in our taxi to which we shall shortly transfer and between us will be the jam the bullion van on its way to King's Cross Railway Station our oven is Ulysses Street with the Major slamming shut the oven door when he releases the handbrake on the ready and park parked and ready professor on the park lorry in the conveniently sloping side street slam no way in or out we provide the cake's bottom layer and the top layer, while a certain prosperous factory provides, unwittingly, the jam. My plan is foolproof, and we have generous minutes in which to be culinary. That is my vision, gentlemen. Let us bake. Bravo, bravo. Louis, in the decoy car, forget driving gently. Cut in hard so you're in front of the bullion van just before it enters Ulysses Street. And when you swerve sideways to block the street in front of it, do it suddenly. You think I've forgotten all this? 
Then you will forgive this reminder from a pedantic perfectionist. One round. Yeah? Our taxi has to cut in immediately behind the bullion van at the same moment Louis cuts in, in front. No problem. I'll just drive it like a taxi. Very good. Except when we fill the trunk with the money cases and loaded it onto the taxi, you then drive it away as steadily as a... as a hearse. Got you, Prof. I've done hearses. Major. Yeah, yeah, I'm ready. When you release the handbrake on the lorry, it will take eight seconds before it hits the wall and seals off Ulysses Street behind us. Yes, I've got that. At the speed Louis will be holding in front, you must release the handbrake as his car passes the end of the side street any later and it could allow any traffic following our taxi to slip through. I'll be spot on. When the money becomes ours, Louis, no attention must be drawn to our sedately departing taxi, so you will drive the decoy car away like a bat out of hell. Your English phrases. What is that supposed to mean? Like a man with a great deal of stolen money in his possession. Harry, a small detail. Yeah. Uh, for a British railway porter's uniform, your buttons are a shade bright. I dirt them down a bit, there's a good chance. I'll see what you mean, yeah. And I am starting the stopwatch. Now, first tick. Once we leave this car, we get the timing right, or we don't. True, Louis. But think of this clipboard as an examination paper. Examination? For what? Let's say, who will work for me again? Oh, good. Yeah, very good. Very good. <laughs> yeah. Ready, gentlemen. And Major to start his walk to Lorry. Five, four, three, two, one. Go. See you chaps later. Tick two. Ready, Louis? To make a gag. Oh, ready. And five, four, three, two, one, go. And good cooking. And tick. That's it, Harry. Tick tock. Ready for your very brief period of employment as a railway porter? Briefer the better. Splendid. <laughs> uh, the token gun, please, Harry. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, better do up that top button on the raincoat. Just a touch of uniform still showing. Right, yeah, right. And six, five, four, three, two, one. Go, cheerio, then. What what do you make of that Louis, Professor? Seems, well, edgy to me. Which is why he'll make a very convincing job of driving the decoy car away. And why he and his kosh can be counted on to persuade the bullion driver to take a short but rather convincing nap. Don't worry about the driver's mate, Professor. I'll only do a 40 winks job with me fist. <laughs> that will do nicely. Now, I think it's time for us to take a taxi. And look, there's one parked conveniently in front of us. <laughs> now, I'm not going to be very long, General Gordon, so you don't worry. Just a small errand of mercy to run for the professor. Mercy! Mercy! Ah! Where did I put that umbrella? How much longer, Professor? Seven. Six, five, four, three, two, one. Voila. Tick. One round, I see a bullion van in our mirror. If you'd be so good as to engage gear, and as soon as it goes by... Now... Excellent. 
cleared in front of Louis. And uh, quite a good gap behind. Good. Right. Ulysses Street coming up. And turn in. And there's the Major already reaching into the lorry's handbrake. Tick. Excellent. A couple of cars turning in behind us, Prof. Mm hmm. Not to worry. There's a decent gap. And the lorry should be starting to roll. Four, three, two, one. Now. Now. Come on, Major. Now. Come on. Take one round, our oven door is closed. Now fall back just a little. The van will break sharply when Louis locks them in. Five, four, three. Impatient man. Modified tick. And to work. Pull up your mask. Oh, right. That car, we want to get past here. If you take his mate, yeah. Hey, what are you? It is very loaded. Out, hey. Oh, thank you, Louis. Always keen. Oof, spot on 40 wins for his mate. Crowbar, here, here. Do the bottom hinge first, one round. Thank you. Cut the grill close to the lock. <coughs> What's happening back there? There's a smaller crowd. They're trying to push the lorry clear. Are they succeeding, Louis? Not yet, but others are helping. Hey! One of them's a copper. I see. Nice work, one round. Keep it steady. Pass the cases out one at a time. And... Starting to move with the lorry. Someone's looking down this way. They can't see anything until we drive away. Now open the trunk and place the cases in. What's going on? Time to leave, gentlemen. And Louis... I know. Like your owl out of hell. Ah. King's Cross Station, please, and do mind the luggage. <laughs> like a nurse. But this facility will be available for passengers joining the train or other stations beyond that point. Thank you. Keep the change. Uh, ta. Ta very much. And... Three, two, one. Ah, Porter. Just this one trunk. What you are. Slower, Harry. Remember, you're working for the Great British Railways. All right. <clears throat> the train platform one is the one five from Cambridge. Splendid. See you shortly, Harry. Goodbye. This the parcels from Cambridge, then. Stick on with the rest, mate.
look, I'm sorry, Sergeant. Detective. It's the only Detective way Detective we'll... or not, you can't hold up trains in a mainline station. It'll disorganise the entire network. Chaos. But we're certain they're in here with the money. The getaway car was found abandoned and empty a few minutes ago in Field Street. Just outside, I know. But I can't stop the trains. Anyway, they could have gone somewhere else. Not the way we've got the area sealed off. Telephone still out of order. How convenient. And five, four, three, two, one. Tick. Major? Here, Professor. You have a clear view of the station entrance? Yes, quite clear. Splendid. Mrs. W's taxi should be coming into view just about. Now. Here you are, Mum. King's Cross. Thank you, driver. I wonder if you wouldn't mind waiting a few minutes for me to take me back. No trouble at all. Very well. As station master on your head, be it. Oh, no. But it would be if I stopped the trains. Anything else? How many pieces of luggage have you booked in in the last 10 to 15 minutes? <laughs> I wouldn't have a clue. Ask that clerk over there. He'll know. You! How much luggage have you booked in in the last What's 10 to... What's to you? Police. Oh. Coming in or going out? Going out, dimwit. Leaving by train. All oh, right. Keep your air on. I wondered if you could help me. I'm looking for a... a oh, <laughs> I, I'm here. There's your sign. Just a tick, lady. Luggage going out. I'll have to check. It's a trunk. Professor Marcus, who lodges with me, is having a trunk sent up from... Where was it? Cambridge. Madam, I'm on very urgent police business. And he's leaving today, and he's so busy that he asked me... Of course, to... lady. Let's see. From Cambridge, name of Marcus. Oh! Yeah, here it is. Will you sign for it, please, Mum? That's it. Glad to help. Now let me get a porter for you. I'm waiting to make a tick, Major. Tick away. She's coming out now. And? And a porter's got our trunk. A taxi's driving away. Trunk safely on board. To be stopped at the police check, which I assume is now in place. Hmm? <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Policeman's opened the door to have a word with her. And why shouldn't he? Keep calm, Major. Trust my judgment. Uh, sorry to bother you, madam, but... Oh, dear. Oh, dear. I, no, I, I know what this is all about. Uh, how could you? Amelia and that wretched spaceship. Hmm? I'm so sorry. I explained it all to the sergeant at the station... And he assured me that wheels wouldn't turn, but it seems, oh dear, that they have. What a waste of time. It was the wireless, you see. Uh, she, uh, that's, uh, that, that's, that's quite all right. Uh, Sorry to have held you up, madam. Well, I'm blessed. I don't know what she said, but they couldn't wave her through quickly enough. <laughs> Bless Mrs. W. Verify that she's clear, and we'll follow her back to the house at a discreet distance when she passes us. The taxi's approaching the roundabout. Mm -hmm. It's going around it, and now it's... You... Oh, oh, no. Well? Well, it... it, 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 it Major, it, speak. It, it, the taxi's gone right round the roundabout, and it, it's coming back. What? It's pulled up at the entrance again. She's walking back into the station. It's crawling with police. What? What is that woman doing? What is it? What's going on? God. Give me the phone. You will let go. Will you? Major, Major, let go. What's all this about? Listen, Louis. Will you give me that phone? 
Hey, what's going on? They, these fools, they've broken my line of communication. Right. There you are, Prof. Thank you, one round. Major. Major! She's, she's walking out again. She's getting back into the taxi. She, she'd forgotten her umbrella. She could have shopped us all, silly old... What are you knocking her for? She's got the lolly for us, ain't she? We're nearly home now, Louis. Nothing can possibly go wrong. <laughs> what she stopped for? And right outside the nick. Keep calm, everybody. Blimey, she's marching over to that fruit barrow, waving her bully like a sword. What's her game now? Knowing Mrs. W, I fear it may be something to do with that horse eating most of the produce, or more particularly that barrow boy hitting it over the head with a grapefruit. Stop that at once. What are you doing to that horse? Get out of it. Leave my... Is your horse, Mrs.? It doesn't matter whose it is. You have no right to treat it like that. No right! No right! He's had three pounds of my best pippins, plus whatever else takes his fancy. Shoo! Get out of it! Will you leave that horse alone? Don't prop me with that brolly, missus! Whose horse is it? <laughs> Clear off! Get ya! Driver, I insist you do something to stop this vicious brute. Uh, listen, lady, this ain't no business of mine. I shouldn't really have left the cab. So keep out of it and get this old witch out of here. You brute! Ow! Now, look, you, if you prob me again... Hey, hey, no, don't you threaten her. Oh, no. Oh, no. All right, my business goes down some <laughs> nag's gob, is it? Oh, I only said... This is your taxi, is it? Yeah. Your business premises, is it? Right. Uh, hey! <laughs> what do you think you're doing? All right. Oh, all right. Oh, what sort of letter This ruffian has been behaving as great. Right, you stay over there. You go back to your cab. The bogies! I knew it! Let's get out of here! No, slowly, Harry. Just drive round the corner for a while and then we'll come back. Older ladies, I hate older ladies! Where's everybody gone? I suspect inside to help the police with their inquiries. How'd they get the horse in? Prof, tell me I don't see that. I'm rather afraid you do, Harry. Our trunk of money. On the front steps of the police station. It's just sitting there. Couldn't we go and... No one, I hope, is going to suggest that we steal it. Drive round for a while, Harry. I need to reconsider. Professor, have you hatched another brilliant plan yet? Look, Louis. Stop the car. There's the Major. Oh, thank goodness. <laughs> thank goodness I stopped you in time. Before what, Major? Before you went back to the house. I was just approaching it myself a few minutes ago when I saw two policemen leaving it and Mrs. W waving them happily goodbye. Major. Two policemen entering a house might well be a matter for our concern. Two policemen being waved from it, happily, could be quite otherwise. You English. Where to now, Professor? Home, Harry. Home. Ah, Professor. Mrs. Wilberforce. Good afternoon, gentlemen. Your last rehearsal here. Possibly. Possibly. Oh, uh, how did you manage with the little task you were going to help me with? Oh, all done. There it is. What? Uh, but how on earth? Your trunk, safe and sound. It, it's impossible. It's just sitting there. Well, I'm afraid it was beyond me to carry it upstairs to your room. Mm. You had no problems? To be honest, a slight one on the way home, but two nice policemen from the station brought it here for me in their car. Oh, in a police car? <laughs> Open the trunk, Harry. Tell. Oh, 
And four silver nest eggs. Which one first, Major? Ah, well, um, I rather fancy the look of that one. One round. If you were persuaded to become unlocked, please. Roy. Shall I lift the lid? Oh, my God. <laughs> Patience. If you would be so kind, one round. Cool. What about that? How about that indeed? Louis, Major, help me transfer the notes to the instrument cases. Harry, yeah. stand by the door in case Mrs. W decides to leap in with another tray of tea. That seems to be everything. Mrs. Wilberforce, our musical tour awaits. You know, I was hoping you'd be able to play for my friends. They'll be so disappointed to have missed you by just a few minutes. Alas, other performance obligations. Got to get my cello, Prof. Essel, uh, upstairs. Uh, oh, I'm so sorry. Uh, uh, goodbye, Major <laughs> Courtney, and I wish you good fortune. Oh, uh, yes, uh, thank you, dear lady, thank you, thank you. Goodbye, madam. Goodbye, gentlemen. Come on. The sooner we're clear of that old... Now then, Louis, she served us very well. Very well indeed. Where is one round? Bringing down a rather valuable cello case. Mr. Lawson, when I was listening to your playing of that Andante passage a while ago, I thought it the most sensitive playing I've ever heard. <laughs> Sorry. You thought it was good, eh? Yes. Oh, yes, indeed. Bye-bye, Mrs. Wilberforce. Thanks for the nice tea and everything. Not at all. Goodbye. What's that moron playing at? Why is he just standing by the door? It's the strap on the case. It's stuck in the door. <coughs> we'll ring the bell, brains. <coughs> Don't try and pull it out. Careful, you'll break the case open. <coughs> oh, Mr. Lawson, whatever's happened to your cello case? What is all? all That's it! She's seen the money! Oh, my God! Everybody out! Get that money quickly! <laughs> it's all right, Mrs. Wilberforce. Everything's under control. Shut the door, Major. But what is all that money? We must do something. She knows! She saw the money! Is that the lot? Yeah, that's it. Dear Mrs. Wilberforce. Professor Marcus, I don't understand what is going on. <laughs> of course. May we come in? <laughs> You're wondering about the money in Mr. Lawson's chair. It's only natural that you should. Mr. Lawson sold his uh, butcher's shop in Hammersmith. Uh, that's right, I did. And he, and he got cash for it because there wasn't time to you know, like write a cheque. I still don't quite understand. We must get her out of here. Snatch. Get her into the car. Good afternoon, Louisa. Oh. Amelia. Oh, oh, a tea party. Oh, yes, uh, do come in. <laughs> Uh, these are the children. <laughs> you were able to stay to tea after all. We'll have to take them both. We've got to get away. <laughs> Constance, good afternoon. How are oh, you? I'm so sorry I'm late. Oh, or am I early? Oh, Amelia, you're here. Let me present these gentlemen. This is Professor.
Where's our markers? Oh, how wonderful! <laughs> what do we do? What do we do? Chuck the bus. How do you do? Lettuce, dear, come in. We're gonna need a double decker. Louisa, dear, you have you seen the evening papers? Look, there's been a terrible robbery at King's Cross Station. At one o'clock this afternoon, the paper says... Oh, uh, have your paper... May, may I oh. see the latest oh. test score, please? Uh, A robbery at King's Cross Station. Why, I, I was there. No, what is the score? Uh, Australia are all out for £60,000. At one o'clock... Uh, I mean, 310. Uh, out for 310. And the police say they can't tell how the money was taken from the station. Can't they? <laughs> oh, you see, ladies, ladies, please, do you mind stepping into the drawing room for a few minutes? I have something of a very private nature to say to these gentlemen. <laughs> I want to talk to Major Gordon. Just for the moment, Constance. Thank you. Professor Marcus, I take it there's no need for me to look at the newspaper? Madam. I thought not. I am shocked by this revelation. Shocked and appalled. And I must tell you, all of you... Oh, Louisa, you've only laid four places. Surely these gentlemen are staying to tea. Yes, in a moment, Constance. Please. We'll, we'll bring our own costumes. <laughs> well, there's nothing for it. You'll have to come in. But these are some of my oldest friends. They mustn't get the slightest inkling of this disgraceful affair. This is most embarrassing. Embarrassing. And humiliating. Simply try for one hour to behave like gentlemen. All right, Mum. Darling, I am growing old. You pedal the pianola beautifully, Professor. Do I? Do I? I don't believe this is happening. Right, son. Those cups, please, Major. You're coming. It would do no good to take the money back, Mrs. Wilberforce. Nobody wants the money back, you see. This particular shipment of money was insured. Uh, will you dry? Will I what? Oh, yeah. yeah. <clears throat> so, now the insurance company simply pays to the factory £60,000. And then, in order to recover its money, it puts a farthing on all the premiums, on all the policies for the next year. So, how much harm have we done anybody? One Farthing's worth, Mrs. Wilberforce. I never thought of it like that. Shut up, you fool. But surely it can't be as simple as all that. If we tried to take the money back now, it would simply confuse the whole issue. They wouldn't even take it back. That's perfectly true. Oh, but this is quite ridiculous. And has it occurred to you to wonder why five such men as ourselves should have been driven to this? Well, I, I did... There think... is not one amongst us, alas who is not burdened with enormous responsibilities to others. Uh, Major. Uh, yeah, yes? Uh, tell her. Tell her your own story. What? Oh, no. no, no. Please, please. Yeah. Really? Claude. Yeah. All right. At this very moment, Mrs. Wilberforce, there is waiting an invalid, a dear, sweet old lady, not 
May heaven bless her. Not unlike yourself. Waiting with patient serenity, but with high hope that she has nothing more to fear of unpaid doctor's bills. My... my mother. <laughs> Not the tea towel, Harry. No. I still don't think it's enough justification. Madam, how can you be so heartless? You're a cruel woman. I'm sorry. This but, uh, is getting us nowhere. We must do something. Quite right, Mr. Harvey. We've got to tell her. Mrs. Wilberforce, I wanted to spare you this, but I'm afraid the police are after you too. You're as hot as the rest of us, ma'am. As hot? If they pick her up, there's no saying what they might do to her. Pick me up? Would you mind explaining? Ooh, job planned in her house, and she carried the lolly for us. I know I carried the lolly, but I... Oh, this is ridiculous. I, I shall deny any knowledge. Mm, she'll never stand up to it, of course. The grilling, the rubber hoses. The rest of her life sewing mailbags. Mailbags? <laughs> and no one to look after General Gordon. Oh. If they get us... I'll tell them she planned the job, and I'll tell them she planned the big one. Oh, oh. The East Castle Street job. <laughs> oh, dear, oh, dear. What am I going to do? Check that. It's a bogey! A bogey? <laughs> Quick, out the back way. She's got to answer it. The lights are on. Listen to me, Mrs. Wilberforce. Go to the door. Ask him what he wants. Ye yes. If he asks about me, say I left this afternoon for Manchester. M Manchester? Don't let him in. He can't come in without a search warrant. If you don't want to rot in stir for the rest of your life, stay buttoned up. Buttoned up? Uh, yes. Yes, Evening, Mrs. Wilberforce. What do you want? It's Sergeant MacDonald. I know who it is. What do you want? Well, just to let you know, we've sorted out that rumpus, the horse and taxi business. You'll not be wanted. I won't be wanted. I won't come in. I'm all wet. You can't come in. I'm going to bed early. And Professor Marcus left this afternoon for Manchester. You can't come in without a search warrant. Search warrant, Mum? You haven't got a search warrant, have you? No, Mum, I... Uh... Then good night. Oh dear, don't let him in. Just tell him to buzz off. You're quite sure you're all right, Mrs. Wilberforce? Of course. Now will you please buzz off? Oh, is that all right? Get your instrument cases ready. As soon as he's cleared the street, we'll go. Madam, a piece of advice. Don't go near a police station, any police station, ever again. Just lie low and stay buttoned up, understand? Surely you don't intend to take the money. We must send it back. No, not again. I agree we must stay low and buttoned up, but it wouldn't be right to keep the money. Now listen, and with both ears, we've had all we're going to take from you. No. It isn't any good. I know I carried the lolly for you, but even if they do make me sew mailbags, I would rather go to the police station and give myself up. Now, I really must sit down. <clears throat> Gentlemen, let us retire to my room. Well, come on. Decide. She could be putting on her coat right now. It ought to look like an accident. Who's going to do it? Oh, no, no, no. I, I, I simply couldn't. I, I, I'd be terrified of, of, of muffing it. I mean, I, I, I mean, say... Someone the... experienced. Why look at me? You've told her so often that you hate little old ladies. And why not you? You're the one who masterminded this lunatic mess. 
What did you say? You! If we are going to the police station, Professor, we ought to go now. Well, well we'd, uh, we'd sooner not go now, Ma. Oh, not in this rain. It's, uh, it's Mr Harvey here. He's got a bit of a bad chest. A what? A bit of a bad chest. Oh! <laughs> oh, oh, very well. As soon as the rain stops. But I think in the meantime, I'd better lock these instrument cases away in the bedroom, out of temptation. Would you please bring them through? Gentlemen. We should have done it while she was up here. One round. The bedroom door, if you please. <coughs> I'm obliged. Now, we'll settle this the old way. Louis, if you cut one of these matches in half. Choose. Um... Uh, Harry. Oh, thank God. One round. Uh. That's a long match, one round. It's between you and Louis, Major. Oh, oh dear. Oh, I... Well, oh, no. No, I, I, I won't. I can't. Come along, Major. Enough of that. All right. Louis... Put that away. I, I'll do it. But but not not down there. Not not in front of the parrot. Oh, say! No, you 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 all go down and send her up. Then I'll. Uh, yeah, then I, I. Yes, I will. Yes, yes. And don't take too long about it. Oh my goodness! I've got to be quick about this. Mrs. Wilberforce. Oh, good, you're here. Shall we go? Oh, now, now, where's my umbrella? Uh, uh, first, oh. Major Courtney would like to speak to you privately, if you don't mind. Uh, upstairs. But what can he... I think you'll find he has the solution to all our problems. It won't take a minute. One, one moment. Come in. What is it you wish to see me about? And, madam, listen carefully. They have no intention of letting you take them to the police. Oh, but Professor Marcus yeah, said yeah, that... He was lying. At this very <laughs> moment, they believe me to be... To, 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 to be bargaining for your silence. But that's disgraceful. These men are criminals, and I, too, am one of them. Alas, yet a spark of decency remains. I was moved, madam, by your appeal. I myself shall go to the police right now. But I shall need your help. My help? Stay here, guard the money, and give me time to reach the officers of the law. And, uh, please bring them back with me. Yes, but I... What's taking him so long? Be quiet. Major. Major. It's still her. Be quiet. I'm still talking to Major Courtney. Wait downstairs. What's he playing at? Let me pass. He's gone. He's crossed us. The lolly's gone! What? He's packed it all into a cello case and scarped us to the window. I'm going to stay buttoned up. He must be still on the roof. Harry, cover the backyard. One round, cover the front. Louis, get out of the window after him. Do whatever is necessary. I have nothing to say. Come on down, you old fool! Go, 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 go away! 
There's no other way down. Slide the case down to me. No. 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 Then it's just you and me, Major. Oh, leave, leave me alone. Leave me alone. I, I, I warn you. You warn Louis with a chimney pot behind you and this in front. <laughs> no, no, here, here, here's the money. Oh, oh. I, I, I didn't mean to drop it. Louis! Louis! Well fielded, Harry. Professor Marcus. Uh, no tea, thank you, Mrs. W I mean... What are you all doing? Where did you get that cello case? It just fell from up... Uh, uh, I'll have that, Mr. Robinson. I gave Mrs. Wilberforce our word that no attempt would be made to remove the money. Shall we all go in? Now, please place it in this chest, Professor. It, it'll be safer down here. Quite. And I'll keep the key in my pocket. Whatever's that? I expect something fell from the roof, Mal. See what it is, Harry. Oh, I, I, I really must sit down. It's long past my bedtime, and I've had a most exhausting day. The police will be here shortly. Oh, we'll talk about it all, all this then, shall we? Well, where's the Major? Still up there? No, no, he, uh, he come down. Well, bring him in. He come down with the chimney pot. Is he hurt? I shouldn't think he felt a thing. Go on, one round. Choose a match. No. I've changed my mind. I ain't gonna do it. What? You're in this just as much as us. Too late now to have a mind to change, one round. Listen, I took my chances last time we drew, didn't I? You're being stupid. OK, I'm stupid. But nobody touches Mrs W. Nobody. Uh, maybe one round is right. What? Uh, anyway, the first thing to do is to lose the poor old Major. There's a wheelbarrow in the shed one round. Would you mind taking it to the backyard? What for? Uh, to convey the Major to the bridge at the back. He has a train to catch. All right. No one is running out now. That Goosehead is... Unreliable and dangerous, yes. That leaves the three of us. Harry, choose your match. Right. Oh, stroof! Steady the wheelbarrow, Harry. And if... <laughs> At least tuck the Major's arms in, Harry. I'll give one round a hand. You stay with Louis to tidy up. I oh, know. Come along, one round. The Major's train is due. Steady. This is the perfect spot. What we do now? The advantage of this bridge one round is that it lies directly over the main line carrying empty trucks day and night. Get the Major onto the parapet. I shall take this ankle. You take that. That's it. Hold it very tight. Until a train comes and I give you the word. <clears throat> Byron! Byron! Shut up, you. Listen, Mum. We're, we're in a tough spot. 
Don't shout out or nothing. Mum. Blimey, she's in the land of nod. Where's she got that key? Nice. Ready to let go? <coughs> Can't see a thing in this smoke. <coughs> One, two, three, go! No, no. Uh, you better fetch the car. There's uh, no need to go through the house. You wouldn't be trying to keep me out of there, would you? Don't be stupid, Ivan Rahab. Don't call me that. Don't call me. Hey, what are they doing in there? I assure you. Harry's done her, but scarped with the money. He's what? You done her? You done her in? No. Put me down. It wasn't me. Harry, it was Harry. <laughs> Get down the front one round. You'll catch him there. <laughs> which way, which way? No, no. You done her! You done Mrs. No, 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 I never, I never, I never, I never. Louis said you done her! Listen, now listen, listen to listen to me one round. Listen to me. Listen to me. I left her fast asleep. Here, look now, here, take the money, eh? No, 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 you put that plank down one round. <laughs> See? He strangled her in the chair, then took the money. I can see that for myself, Louis. You'd better get out and see... Me. I said nobody was to do her! Mr Lawson. Oh, I, I, I fell asleep. Where's Mr Robinson? He's... he's outside. The cello case. It's gone. Out there too. Then bring it in immediately. I thought she was done. Somebody took the key out of my pocket. I'm very angry. As you have every right to be, Mrs Wilberforce. Mr Robinson will answer for it. Excuse me a moment. Let me have that. I'll take the cello case, thank you. Here you are, Mum. What happened out there? I thought... I thought Harry done her in. So? So, all right, I made a mistake. Put him in the barrow. No, you lose, Harry. I'm staying with Mum. Now, what does your master plan say? That you and I have a goods delivery to make. Don't let him drop till I say. Look, I'll make a proposition to you. I'll take care of him if you take care of her. That's a straight 50-50 split, huh? Oh, no. Let me have one round. You take care of Mrs. W. <coughs> if you think I'm... <coughs> Ready. No! And guess who's next? Don't shoot one round. Uh, but that's Harry's gun, isn't it? Didn't reckon he'd be needing it no more. Shoot him. He got you into this. Been standing here all the time. Heard you both. OK, so who looks stupid now, eh? <coughs> shoot him. <coughs> we'll do a deal. It's both of you. <coughs> and now. <coughs> The safety catch on. I'll take the gun. That knife is more your style. You know, I don't think so. Oh, man, the gun! Ah, ah, ah. Shush now. I think just another forty winks. Ah. <sighs> 
My hand is aching. One round's a big man. There'll be a train. It was a good plan, you know. The best. Except for the human element. All good plans include the human element, but then no really good plan could include <laughs> Mrs. Wilberforce. Unless, of course, we had more men. There are only... <laughs> only five of us. Take it easy, will you? But it would take 30 or 40, perhaps, to deal with her. Because we'll never be able to kill her, Louis. What's the matter with you? She'll always be with us. Forever and ever. <clears throat> Amen. <coughs> You're crazy. You mustn't say things like that, Louis. You mustn't make me angry. Crazy. Crazy. Come back. The master plan. Master plan. With three dead bodies. And soon to be four, my little Sicilian friend. <laughs> Where are you? You can <coughs> trust me. You mad dog. Where are you hiding? Look, Professor, we'll do a deal. I know you're in that bush, but I won't shoot. Just come out. We'll go back and split the money. <laughs> for much longer, you old fool. Come on back up, Professor. I know you're stuck under the bridge. This ladder doesn't go to the ground. Cooey. Looey. Then I come and plug you in your damn nest. Let's stop this stupid game! Where are you? Over here. Ah. Thank you, Louis. It seems to sit better in my hand, don't you think? And still one bullet left. If my addition is up to scratch. No! Look! I was scared! It wasn't you! It... It was a beautiful plan. Let's... let's settle this. Uh -huh, I intend to. I should imagine, oh, that third wagon along will be yours. Will that suit? No! Ah! Every good plan must be open to modification, Louis. <laughs> At least you <laughs> you deserve a wave goodbye. 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 Good. <gasps> yeah. I, I, I can't. I must. I can't hold on. I, I, I help anyone. Is there? Uh, oh no. Oh! the lolly, but 
I, I wasn't really one of the gang, Sergeant. Sure you wouldn't like a cup of tea, Mum? Oh, uh, and I admit the keeper was planned in my house. But it wasn't I who planned it. And I certainly had nothing to do with the East Castle Street job. Didn't you, Mum? I don't even know where East Castle Street is. Well, in that case, I think... Uh... But I, I do have all the lolly. Oh, oh I beg your pardon. I'm, I'm so confused. I, I have all the money back at the house. And the rest of the, the gang? That's the funny thing. They all disappear during the night. I didn't have a spaceship, did they? Thank you, Constable. Really, Sergeant, you you must think my mind is wandering. No, no, Mrs Wilberforce. It's just that, for various reasons, the Force wants you to forget all about the matter. Don't mention it to anyone. Oh, I see. But you'll send someone for the money. Well, I think as far as we're concerned, Mum, why don't you just keep it? Keep the money? Oh, I know it's only a farthing on everybody's policies, but... Yes, they said it would only confuse the issue. Exactly. Now, if you don't mind, I have some other very pressing business to attend to. Yes, oh, of course. Well, uh, good morning, Sergeant Constable. Remarkable, really. Only a farthing. Mrs Wilberforce, just one moment. Oh, dear, I knew this would happen. You forgot something. I did? Oh, yes. Your umbrella. So I did. Oh, no. No, I never liked it. For a rainy day? <laughs> good morning, Sergeant. A very good morning. In The Lady Killers, adapted for radio by Bruce Bedford from the Ealing Comedy screenplay by William Rose, you heard Edward Petherbridge as the professor, Donald Sindon as the major, Gary Waldhorn as Louis, Martin Hyder as One Round, and Daniel Peacock as Harry. Margot Boyd was Mum, Johnny Morris, General Gordon, the parrot, and Stratford Johns, Sergeant MacDonald. Other parts were played by John Hartley, Ross Livingston, Stephen Critchlow, David Timpson, David Collings, Zulema Dean, Patience Tomlinson, Tessa Worsley, and Jonathan Keeble. The pianist was Roger Lim. The Lady Killers was directed by Andy Jordan. <laughs>